Hello, everyone. So there's a blog called The Neighborhood Scout, and they reported the top 30 homicidal cities in 2018 for the United States. We're just gonna present really briefly the top five. So the number one homicidal city in the United States per this blog, Neighborhood Scott, is in Illinois. However, it is not Chicago. Very surprising, it is not Chicago. It is East St. Louis, Illinois, number one. So per this blog, East St. Louis, Illinois is the number one homicidal city in 2018 for the United States. If you look at the, these numbers, you'll see sometimes the numbers for these cities, there were more homicides in this city than in that city, but they ranked higher. It's because they used um, a matrix based on the population for that city. So East St. Louis may have had less murders than Chicago, but per the population, um, it's about 20 some thousand, 26, 27,000, I believe in this city. And Chicago has over 2 million. So when they do every 10,000 citizens in that city will be murdered at what rate or how many people are murdered per 10,000. So that's how they did their grid. Just to explain that to you guys. Because when I looked at this, I'm like, wait, they had more murders here than there. But when, when they do it by that grid, then that's how they come up with who ranks higher. So per this blog, Neighborhood Scott, East St. Louis, Illinois ranked number one. Chester, Pennsylvania ranked number two. And I apologize to everybody in Pennsylvania, but I've never heard of Chester. So I'm assuming it's a smaller city as well. And we're killing each other. Number three, St. Louis, Missouri. Y'all hear about St. Louis, Missouri. Love you guys in St. Louis. Gary, Indiana ranked number four. Um, unfortunately, no surprise with the last two cities I mentioned because we do hear a lot about St. Louis and Gary. Again, love you guys. It's just what I'm reporting, what I've researched. And number five out of these 30, oh, let me go, just go back to say Chicago did rank in the top 30. It's just East St. Louis, Illinois ranked number one over Chicago. Number five is Baltimore, Maryland, which brings me to a story I want to talk to you guys about. A young lady that lives in Baltimore was murdered inside of her salon. She's 21 years old, a mother of a two-year-old, but she was doing it. She was doing what she's supposed to do. She was just um, a great example to her peers and to people like me that, that could be her mom. 21-year-old, um, she's a salon owner as well as a beautician. She owned the Madam D Beauty Salon in Southeast Baltimore. She was tragically murdered on December 21st inside of her salon. Um, officers report when they arrived at the salon for a shooting, they found uh, Destiny Harrison with gunshot wounds to the head. The report said wounds, which means more than one. So whoever shot this young lady intentionally meant to kill her. There's a memorial that has been performing um, around her salon since this tragedy. And ironically, right around the corner from the Madame D Beauty Bar Salon is another memorial that still stands for a young lady who was tragically killed in Southeast Baltimore in July of 2019. Her name is Jasmine Wilson, and she leaves a one-year-old behind. Um, Yasmin was just strolling her baby down the street in that neighborhood and a car drove up and shots rang out and she was murdered right there on the sidewalk and that young lady leaves again a one-year-old behind. Going back to Destiny, 
Destiny had a robbery or, um, yeah, it ended up being a robbery at her salon approximately 12 days before she was murdered. In her police report, she reported that um, two individuals, she walked up on them. They were taking things from the back of her building. Um, I'm assuming supplies, hair, and things like that conducive to her business, her salon. So she confronted those two trying to get her, her merchandise back from them. One person held her down, the other person hit and stumped her and they took off with approximately $3,000 worth of merchandise. So um, Destiny did report to officers um, when she made this report that she feared for her safety, she feared for her business after this attack and this robbery because apparently she knows these two or at least one of the two that ended up robbing her business because she said that character has a shady past and a, is a very dangerous person. So for her to know that about this person, she knew who they were. And if she knew who they were, the police had to know who, who they were because I'm sure she told them. So again, when they were in the back of her building taking her merchandise, they were just stealing. They were thieves. They, they were committing a theft. But when she confronted them and they assaulted her in order to keep possession of the things they had taken from her business, it became a robbery, an actual aggravated robbery. I believe that should be a felony one or felony two, very serious offense, which 12 days, it doesn't take that long to get a warrant. Um, and I don't know that the Baltimore police did not, and the prosecutor's office did not issue a warrant for these individuals. I, I don't know, but hopefully they did. And um, what happened in 12 days from the robbery into her murder, I don't know. Um, at last check, no one had been arrested for her murder. Um, they definitely know who robbed her. If these are the same individuals who committed her murder, I don't know, but they are definitely worth looking into for this. Anyone with information on Destiny Harrison's murder or anyone that was in that salon, because people was in that salon, and of course they scattered, they ran. And um, you, you just don't think, I don't know what I would have done in that situation is when those shots rang out. Um, people scattered and her baby apparently was there at the salon with her and no one grabbed the baby out of harm's way. Thank God these assailants did not do anything to the baby. So the baby is fine. But anyone that was there or if you have any information on this murder, you're asked to call the Baltimore Police Department and their phone number is 410-396-2100. 410-396-2100. Now, if you wanna call, if you have information, but you don't want to be involved and you don't want your name to come out, you wanna be anonymous. They, there is a tip line, um, Crime Stoppers tip line, and you can remain anonymous. And that number is 866-7-LOCK-UP, 866-7-LOCK-UP. And that's 866-756-2587. So please, anyone with information on this murder, please, 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 call so we can get some justice for this family and this mother and this daughter. We are going into 2020, guys. Let's not be on this top 30 list of homicidal cities. Let's, let's change that. I don't know what the answer is. Um, I don't know what the answer is, but the solution is not murdering each other. We, we have to value life and we have to find a way to value our own lives because a lot of this just, just willy nilly taking people out, just, just killing them outlandishly is because we don't value us. We don't value our, ourselves. So how are we gonna value our fellow man? I used to tell my boys, I used to tell all my children, but especially my boys, 
If you meet a young lady out there and you find that she does not respect her mother, don't bring her to meet your mother because if she has no respect for her mother, she's definitely not going to respect your mother. So it's kind of the same scenario with um, how we as people don't value us, don't value life or our life. We don't give a damn about nobody else's. So, all right. Peace, everyone. Thank you for tuning in.